Welcome back to The Remote Worker. My name is Han Torbett, also known as Han Mix World, and in this series finale, we'll be chatting with Noor Brahimi. The first Algerian female travel vlogger and an EU Goodwill ambassador, Noor has previously been named as one of the 100 most influential young people in Africa, an Obama leader by the Obama Foundation, amongst many other incredible distinctions. In this episode, we talk about Noor's creative business and latest venture, as well as her learning process and how to deal with the fear when you're working on a business by yourself. So grab a coffee, a tea, or something stronger, and let's get started. No, thank you so much for being on the Remote Worker podcast. Like, I can't believe after a year and something of having chatted, we finally get to actually have a face-to-face conversation. So this feels great, so thank you. Thank you for having me, Han. I'm very excited to be sharing this conversation with you and with the, the listeners. Amazing. So let's dive straight in. So first of all, connect the dots for us. How did you get into remote working? I think I always, you know, had like six years ago, I started my own business. So I've never really worked for a company or so. And I liked the idea of, you know, having to do things on my own, um, my own terms and time, etc. And then have the free time that I want. Last year, I did start a company work for two months and it was kind of crazy so I couldn't really take it and I was like you know what let me do my own thing and that's like where it started I think last year where it really hit where I started doing remote remote work for other people but also you know for myself yeah I think with the pandemic I think it started with the pandemic amazing I feel like actually a lot of people have kind of gone right pandemic that's really given me the opportunity to really see yeah realize all those dreams and actually take action and then, like, people have just taken off. So, yeah. Do you have a particular kind of why or overall mission that motivates you with your work at all? I think mostly for me, I want to live, you know, my life to the fullest. So I think the why is because I want to have as much free time as I want. I think sometimes as a person, I'm very creative at 3 a.m., And during the day, I'm so lazy. And so I think having that freedom to allow myself to use that whenever the creativity comes to do my best job is, I think, for me, the why. But also having the liberty to know whatever I want also allows me to grow as a person. And so I'm constantly learning new skills and also working on my existing skills. So having that freedom to work whenever I want, but also have the rest during the day or during the week give my body the rest it needs and then work on myself. And so I think during the past year or so, I have grown so much as a person with the skills that I have and the knowledge that I have. So I think that's definitely the why. Nice. Love it. Like what kind of places have you been going to, to learn your skills? Where can people, where should people be going? Like This is one of the things that I keep telling my followers. I think Googling is an underrated skill. <laughs> So (laughs) I think it's a skill on its own. And so usually if I think of something that I want to learn, for example, I'm a travel blogger. And so I wanted to learn about Pinterest because I'm a video creator and then blogging and everything that about Pinterest, I wanted to learn. So basically I start with Google and then I go to YouTube and then I start digging there. I think you don't get the answer you want with the first search. And so you dive in deeper and deeper and deeper until you find the right person with the right information. So I think that's like a free accessible source to everyone, Google and YouTube. You just have to be willing to keep asking questions again and again. I think it's about asking the right questions, but you never really ask the right question the first time. And so, yeah, I think Google and YouTube, I, I keep telling people like Google should be definitely your best friend. I love that you said that. Uh, people seriously, I'm, I so agree. People underestimate how much free information that you have at your fingertips and like even just down to like how we research content but like, it takes literally two clicks to I went somewhere yesterday that people were like wait how do we not know about this and I was like look literally you could find out this particular piece of information two clicks deep into Google two clicks in nice. English like it, yeah people really do underestimate that so I love that that's what you said and you were like yeah I'm so <laughs> that. That's, very yeah. relatable right <laughs> oh my god yes yeah you've said it perfectly you also said that you want to feel alive. You love to feel alive. And again, that honestly sparked so much in me. I literally felt like the same thing. I was like, I was in my early 20s and I went, oh my God, like, I've, all of a sudden I feel like I've wasted my life at 23. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, so I'm going to live my life to the fullest. So it felt so like crazy. I had this like moment where I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing with my life? I think I, I actually hadn't. You're 23 saying this. Like, how can this be a thing? 
I so agree. So what does living life to the fullest look for you? It doesn't have to be relatable to everyone, but I think for me, it's having, like I said, like before, the freedom to allow myself to work within the time frame that I want and then allowing myself to take a break when I need it, maybe travel when I need it. And I know it's not an option for everyone. People sometimes need, you know, security and they need the salary at the end of the month. So that's pretty much understandable. But for me, I do consider myself lucky enough to, you know, have the freedom to do the things at my own pace and allow myself to take a break, whether it lasts a day, a week or a month. I think that would you know, freedom is. And also, I think one of the aspects that we do not talk about maybe that much when it comes to freelancing, a lot of people or working remotely, a lot of people see it as only a positive side. So there's also, you know, the negative into it when you're not really sure sometimes if you're going to get work or not. But I think for me personally, it's worth the risk because when I'm not working, I'm definitely either resting or working on my skills to get more, you know, work in the different fields that I can master. So living life on your own terms, right? Yeah. Yeah, amazing. So, I mean, for people who might be feeling scared about taking that first initial step, what would like your top piece of advice be for someone who's going, I'm so inspired by Noor, like, I want to be like her, but what's my first step? I get asked this question a lot on Instagram when people like see me doing different things. And I think the way I would describe it is as if you're kind of, free falling or skydiving for the first time you you don't really know what's going to work or what's not so i think of course the first thing is you either you know see how other people are doing it and of course there's going to be some questions some fear and then you jump into it and you learn through the process that's how i personally do it but i think one of the mistakes a lot of people do is take a lot of time questioning and then searching and so as the time passes also opportunities and the work opportunity that is now available will also pass so i think do your research don't do a lot of research jump into it and learn through the process i think that's worked for me in the different businesses that i have it works for my friends and i think also a lot of people i don't know if you agree but jump into it is definitely um i think there is no other way to do it at the end of the day like the fear is always going to be there the fear is always going to manifest in different ways like my, I don't have a fear necessarily anymore. I have a like my brain switches into like a it's almost, you know like on an old TV like when it would kind of go black and white and like just it's like it's like something cuts out in your brain rather than it actually being I'm scared. It's like my brain tries different tactics to try and divert the same thing of like that caveman brain stay in your cave and be safe kind of feeling versus just go live. Like let's go find a more exciting cave. <laughs> Definitely. And I think yeah. it's it's the feeling of, okay, so this didn't work. Let me try the next thing. Mm. It's going to work. But let me change one setting and it's going to mm. work. If it doesn't work, then at least I know. So mm. I think it's instead of being a fear of failure, it's knowing what works and what doesn't work. And so you're constantly improving things. 100% agree. It's kind of like a, it might seem like a failure. Like, you know, I, I almost welcome failure and I welcome discomfort. And like, if I'm in a state of something failed, because I've never failed in my mind. I'm like, there's no such thing as failure. That's a learning curve. Like, not to get all like kind of weird Instagram quote kind of weird all over on us. But I think, yeah, it's about being alive. It's about being able to step into like that no matter what. It's about being able to say like, no, I'm getting there. I don't care how many, like how much I have to fine tune it. I feel like it's fine tuning, right? It's not about I failed. It's not about all oh, this feels wrong. It's about fine tuning until it, fits and it, it, the goal works for you yeah okay then, I, I, I didn't know this thing today I'm gonna go to google like I didn't know this thing today so I'm gonna ask this person like it's yeah I so agree so agree just do it <laughs> yeah just dive into it and then you'll know some people um, I think for me ask like what's the first step like one two three four mm. I say I didn't know no one really knows it's like you jump and then the road starts kind of, you know, like, or things start lining up as you do it. And that's the best way. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's like a road on a car on the road. You know, you literally see the first, like, few hundred feet in front of you. That's all you need to know as well. That's all you need to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> definitely. I love this. So what does a typical work week look like for you? I actually don't have a typical week. I'm a workaholic. So sometimes... 
I work night and day. I only like three, sleep three hours, get the work done, and then have like my body resting for a week because sometimes I provide services. So I have a deadline that's like, it's not a, a daily or weekly basis. And so I have the liberty of either, you know, burning myself out and then resting sometimes like today or for the past three days, I have been lying down because I came back from a weekend. And so I'm tired. I don't want to force myself, but when I do start working, it's an endless amount of time until I get that piece of work done. And I think it, it's different from, um, person i'm so much of a last minute get it done person mm -hmm. so i like to work under pressure so it's either resting and then working so hard but i don't i think have a balance between two no that's fair enough again it's the living life on your own terms like no remote worker schedule looks the same i think that's the beauty of it right and i think going back to what we were talking about with the fear concept i think that's what people find scary as well is it's like your routine is literally your own like your life is all of a sudden very much your own like it's not dictated yeah. by anyone else but you so yeah no I, I think that's perfect do you work from home or do you go out to cafes or I mostly work from home because I have like my room is my studio my bedroom but also my office and so I have set it in a way that it's so comfortable for me to work I have you know my all of my gear so this is where I feel most comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need the absolute calmness and, you know, zero noise. And so that's why home works best for me. But I've done some work as I was, you know, traveling somewhere in a, in a hotel room. And it, it also works as well. So, yeah. But mostly, mostly, I think my room is my safe space where I get all of my work done. Amazing. Yeah. Now, again, I love that because some people think like, oh, in order to be a remote worker, you've got to go work in a wee work or you've got to go down the local coffee shop which don't get me wrong I love me a local coffee shop however sometimes yeah it's it's all each to your own it's all individual taste and all individual preference and down to your own goals definitely sometimes I go to to co-working spaces if I want to you know connect with people like-minded yeah. people you know have some ideas sometimes but I think whatever works for you it, there's not a must do if uh, you're comfortable at home, then work from home. If you're comfortable in a co-working space or a coffee shop that works for you, then just do it, you know? Mm, absolutely. So like, when you've been on your travels or even in your hometown, is there a favourite place like that you like to work apart from home? Like, Do you have a personal preference? I think there's a place that I've discovered like a month ago, and that's like a chalet in the middle of the mountain where you're literally sur surrounded, you know, by trees and it snows and Stop. it's like so beautiful. Yeah. And there's the cheminée and the fire. So yeah, that's like a really calm place where I did get to kind of some, get some work done. And I'm going there, I think at least once a month, one to clear my head, but also, you know, to clear my ideas and get some work done. So that's definitely a, one of my favorite places this year. I've like went four times and more times are coming next next month and the months are coming as well. Sounds like absolute heaven, quite frankly. Oh. Yeah, it is. And speaking of being in the mountains and out in nature, like can we just talk about this epic tour that you've got coming up at the end of the week? Yeah, so that's something I started. You know, I travel a lot alone or sometimes with friends. And I get a lot of female followers telling me, we would love to travel with you. Can we come with you? Can we come with you? And so I was like, okay, let me just plan this trip on a weekend to my favorite place. And, and I did last weekend. And it was amazing. Not only because, you know, it was just a girl's trip, but also because I went with girls that never been out of their cities before alone. So it was like, this is definitely a thing that I will be doing. So it's part of a business I'm, I'm, I'm growing, but it it's so inspiring to me, meeting new people every time in a heavenly place, but also, you know, hearing their stories that empower you, you empower them as well somehow. And so, yeah, it's it's been great. The least I can say about it. Yeah, I'm so inspired by you right now. Like That's just, yeah. I'm excited to follow the adventure. Where can we follow the adventure? So mostly Instagram as it happens, but I'm also publishing YouTube videos in English. So Noor Brahimi on my channel. And so every time I'm planning a trip, probably in other places as well, I will be sharing that. And I'm trying to create new concepts for girls so that, you know, it's not like a copy paste 
thing that's happening with some extra value. It's been my first uh, experience. And speaking of which, it was scary. Uh, I didn't know. I'm usually an introvert. So, you know, dealing with people, planning things and making sure everything is perfect. So that was stressful. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. But I was surprised that the girls loved it and they wanted to come to other retreats. And I was like, okay, it went well. So it encouraged me. It definitely helped me learn on how to make it better. But yeah, so yeah, just jump into it and do whatever you want to do. You would never guess you're an introvert. That's so funny. But I, I can't <laughs> believe that. But yeah, I know like you're you just like can exude this amazing energy like through the screen. It's cool. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I suppose actually like, For people who can maybe also consider themselves, especially girls and women who consider themselves introverts and are like, I want to be able to do this, but I'm scared to. Like, what would you kind of say to those girls and women who are like, oh, my God, like, where do I start? Or like, how do I do that? What advice would you give? So I personally jump into it. I'm scared. And I started by, for example, I'm in the tourism industry. So going to conferences where I meet other people and then make myself talking to people and then be like, oh, it wasn't that bad. So I think for me, I know there's work I need to do. And especially if you want to launch business, sometimes you need connections. And so you need to connect with people. You need to talk with new people. And so especially when it's like-minded people sometimes, I think it makes it easier. Sometimes talking to a friend helps me. Like they tell me how awesome I am. And I have great friends, by the way. So (laughs) thank you. Um, So I think that's one of the things that helped me kind of get over the fear of talking to people as an introvert so I have my introverted times when I'm alone that's why I think sometimes I stay home for a week after you know the connection happens I prefer to not talk to anyone but when it happens I try to get the most out of it Mm -hmm. enjoy what I can and uh, you know it's not that bad people are are awesome so (laughs) (laughs) yes again so like I suppose yeah dive into it just do it and then yeah take the time for your introverted self to recover makes sense makes total sense I love that tell us a little bit more about your work as an EU goodwill ambassador so that's a title I got I think last year with uh, some other content creators in the Middle East and North Africa where we started by sharing some local stories local success success stories and so that's the aim of it like that's what our let's say role is is to share stories and tell people that there are opportunities out there there's some people who got you know some help and opportunities where they can learn they can get financing opportunities and so we kind of shed the light on these stories i was incredibly lucky to have met some women and i i I love working with women so i met women in some rural areas that are fighting to feed their children and create opportunities for them And so they were empowering stories. And I think what I did is kind of combine tourism. So I went to these rural areas with zero cover, like no one knew it was a touristy place or at least a place with some potential. And so creating content there definitely helps people know, oh, I can go there. I can support the local economy. I can support these women. Uh, I think it's for me, being a goodwill ambassador have definitely helped me access some six stories that I would probably never had the chance to hear about. And so I want to share these stories as well with uh, other people. Amazing. It's incredible. Just again, following like what you take joy in and what you're, what you're passionate about leads to some insane opportunities. Again, like I think it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning about how just like, it's about just doing it because you're going to miss these opportunities otherwise. Yeah. And just follow what you love doing. definitely and spread amazing stories yeah so speaking of great stories what makes a great storyteller i think what makes a great storyteller is probably when you share stories i think sometimes it's important to not share the stories about you but about either the place that you're going to or think about how is this going to be relatable to the person watching this or what the the thing that they will be taking from this when they watch this. And so I think always thinking about what is the message or the takeout that is going to somehow have a positive or at least a thought, you know, with the person watching this and how is it benefit maybe the story, the place or the person I'm telling the story about. Amazing. In terms of technique, do you do like any pre-production at all or...? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I started doing this because I don't want to be, you know, 
sharing random videos. And so I started doing the research, visualizing how I want the video to look like, and then asking myself again, what do I, what's the story I want to tell and what's the end, you know, objective from it? What are people going to get from it? And so I do a lot of research, some planning of how I visualize the video to be, and that definitely helps, you know, produce better, let's say, videos and stories. Absolutely. And do you look at all at any trends or any conversations, or is it just kind of like you pick up on things that are specifically something that so, you take action in? So that depends on the platform. I actually create content on multiple platforms or on all platforms, so Instagram, TikTok. So on some platforms, of course, I do kind of follow the trend, for example, on TikTok or Instagram. But on YouTube, I like to keep the content as authentic. Like I tell the stories that I think or feel that are worth sharing, which surprisingly a lot of people like. So yeah, that's, I think, what people are used to with my content. And so, no, for example, on YouTube, I do not follow any trends. Like I do whatever feels right in, Mm. yeah. I suppose in terms of trends, I meant kind of more like, I know you see that there's a a big rise in, for example, like local tourism or like there's a big rise in, or like there's loads more women who are looking to have, like go on different tours together and what, and whatnot. I guess that's kind of, does that make sense as a question? Um, No. (laughs) (laughs) No, fair enough. We'll leave that one there. So, like, am I doing local tourism because it's a trend? No, 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 no. Don't worry. I think you answered that perfectly. I think I was trying to get out of something else, and you have answered that in your own way. So that's, no, that's perfect. Don't worry about that at all. That's perfect. So what is your favorite piece of tech equipment in your bag? My iPhone. I have uh, mm. two cameras. But recently, I started filming with my iPhone, and I'm loving it because it's like... A small thing that you can, you know, grab out of your pocket. It's very light. And so it's like my best friend for now. I'm going to the desert for a week in a few days and I'm taking my phone. I got a drone recently, so I haven't used it yet. And I hope it's going to be my next (laughs) favorite thing as well. Which one have you got? I got the Mavic Mini. because I love mine. I'm like, I don't want to get a big one and then crash it. (laughs) At least, yeah, you know. Yeah, I haven't had the chance to practice with it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to give it a try there and see what it looks like. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I've got Mavic Mini and it's honestly my favorite. I can't wait to put it up when I go to Mallorca in a couple of weeks. I'm like, yeah, just give me an opportunity to do this. Like, yeah, it needs to fly. Oh, I can't wait to see you using that one. Okay, well, the last thing that I have for you is finish this sentence. Home is where... I think it's a cliche, but home is wherever the heart is. <laughs> so, yeah, I think for me personally, I feel home everywhere I go. That whatever the the place like makes me feel happy, then that's where home is. It can be like the weekend I just spent, or it can be here, my room, or it can be anywhere that literally makes me happy. So, yeah, and a lot of places make me happy. <laughs> that is an incredibly heartwarming notes to end on so no thank you so much for being on the podcast with me thank you so much for having me it was a lovely conversation that i will be looking forward to to hear and to share with a lot of people that i know will be interested in hearing this and other and other stories as well thank you so much for listening to this episode of the remote worker and thank you Noah, for your awesome advice you can follow Noah's adventures below on her youtube and instagram tag Noah at noah.brahimi and myself han at handmates world and tell us about your dream. Just so you know, the podcast has undergone a little creative work itself, and you'll now find it on Instagram at The Remote Life Podcast. Thank you so much again for listening, and we can't wait to remote work with you in the next series.